Today we're going to be taking a look at Avatar Frontiers of Pandora on my RTX 3080 Ti. I've got a few requests for this because of the 12GB VRAM buffer and the fact that this game is uh, quite VRAM demanding, obviously. The concern has actually been the 12GB VRAM buffer. So why don't we go through the settings first and we'll see what happens. So we're running the game at 1440p. We're starting with 1440p and we've turned up scaling off and we're using the ultra graphical preset, right? So that puts everything on max for us. And let's throw the performance metrics on the screen and we seem to be getting around 60 FPS, okay? Now a rule of thumb for me as someone that owns a 4090 and a 3080 Ti is that what the 4090 gets at 4K, the 3080 Ti usually gets at 1440p. It's usually, uh, kind of what I see, right? Kind of makes sense. The 4090 is like twice as fast. 4K, 2K, right? Just a rule of thumb. Uh, don't think too much of it. But anyway, so uh, we're going to be checking this one out because um, this should be useful for the RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti, even though I don't own those cards. As far as the VRAM buffer goes, it's the same. And now the um, memory bus it's quite a bit smaller on the 4070 but that shouldn't really be a big factor at 1440p especially with a much bigger l2 cache on the ada gpus but that's besides the point we're looking at the 3080 ti here we're going to make our uh, way to this cave because i'm trying to get a skill point and i want to touch on the whole vram thing so i've seen uh, i've seen people say that just assume that when it's bad performance, when they experience bad performance, they just blame it on the VRAM without actually knowing how to read VRAM metrics or what happens when you run out of VRAM. Um, I've seen people contribute just a shitty PC port to VRAM, uh, even though you can tell on their benchmarks that they're not running out of VRAM. But that's besides the point. So I think it's important to actually look into it properly and determine what the issue is and if there is a vram issue sure we can call it out and show how we came to that conclusion right i think that's only fair uh, basically when you run out of vram it's going to spill over to your system ram and then you're going to see your frame times just get really bad your wumps and lows will go to crap your frame times will look all jittery. You'll know when you run out of VRAM. It's, and it's going to be consistently bad, right? Obviously, with the 12 gigabyte card, you're not going to see your VRAM use go to 13 because the card doesn't have that. What's going to happen is you're going to see it spill over to your system memory and your system memory usage will go up and your performance will go down, okay? So this here is our skill point here, and we seem to be doing okay on the VRAM, obviously. Our performance is really good. Let's hook up our USB. Alright, why don't we make our way out of here and we'll try some uh, DLSS. So why don't we go ahead and enable some DLSS now. I've set DLSS to quality. We're still using the ultra graphical preset. We're getting around 90 FPS. That makes sense. We were getting around 60 before, around a 50% increase in performance. I'm gonna make my way towards my mission. This is some really, really good performance. I actually uh, wonder how this will compare to the 6800 XT when I check that out at 1440p. Looking at the 7900 XTX M4090, that NVIDIA seems to have a performance advantage in this game for some reason. Even though the 6800 XT is not really comparable to the 3080 Ti, it's more comparable to the 3080, just for the sake of curiosity, right? And I can only compare what I have. I don't have a bunch of GPUs. I'm actually going to look into DLSS and FSR because I've noticed that DLSS has some ghosting issues in this game. Whatever DLSS version they're using, I'm not entirely sure. FSR seems to do better in that regard as far as the ghosting, but that's not perfect either. It's just certain things that you'll see ghosting on, like, you know, the random butterflies that fly around or like birds in the distance. You're not going to see ghosting with trees swaying back and forth. It's very strange. I'm not sure how some things ghost around, but some do not. So while they do ghost a little bit with DLSS, with FSR, they more like disappear. Um, so it's, it, there's positives and negatives to both. But anyway, so we can run 1440p Ultra 60 native with the 3080 Ti 
or we can throw on DLSS quality and get around 90-ish FPS with the 3080 Ti without much issues. I think next is checking out FSR 3 with frame generation. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at frame generation with FSR. I've set FSR to quality and enabled frame generation. We're again at the ultra graphical preset. And let's look at our performance. I've gone to a heavy foliage area too, just to make sure. And um, yeah, there's a little bit of a weird behavior here. I mean, we are getting around 120 FPS, but if you look at the GPU use, it's all over the place. It goes to 80%, 90%. So that's weird. I've never really seen that. Now, I don't think it's running out of VRAM because the performance is actually pretty good. But it doesn't look great as far as um, how smooth the frame rate is. It actually feels like my 4090 did when I put it to full screen. I was running into some issues. However, I'm not on full screen. I'm on borderless, which should work pretty good. So I'm not really sure what's happening here. It doesn't, it's not smooth at all. Why don't we try going from FSR quality to ultra quality? Yeah, it doesn't really feel that smooth. Maybe it's a VRAM thing, but at the same time, I don't think it is because the frame times actually look pretty good. But then again, the GPU use is going up and down from 90 to 80. But then again, that's not something I did see happen when I did run out of VRAM in Ratchet and Clank. I had really bad frame times and 1% lows, and that's not really happening here. It feels exactly like it did when FSR 3 wasn't working properly in full screen mode. That's what it feels like. So I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. Uh, but it's not worth it to use frame generation in this scenario, at least for me, uh, while making this video. It was definitely smoother when I was just using DLSS quality and getting around 90 to 100 FPS. So, yeah, I mean, it very well could be a VRAM thing because we went from 80 to 130 now. So maybe it freed up a little. Then again, the VRAM and RAM use process looks to be the same. So, who knows? But I think... It's time to check out 4K now. I suspect we're probably going to run into some VRAM issues at 4K. But who knows? We'll find out. Alright guys, so now it's time to take a look at 4K. Here's our game set to 4K. And we're using DLSS set to quality. Again, we have the game set to the ultra preset. So all the graphical settings are maxed out. Okay? And let's see what we get for performance here. So we seem to be getting around 60 FPS. So it seems to be essentially similar to what it was at 1440p, right? Kind of makes sense, I guess. And uh, we're going to make our way to towards this mission here. And um, yeah, guys, I think uh, so far anyway, this, this feels great. As you can see, the performance for yourself, uh, it's pretty good. Now, I don't know what happens if you play for an hour or anything like that um maybe there's some vram uh leakage <laughs> or whatever but from what i can see here um this is actually pretty good so far again if say there was to be a vram situation you could probably knock it down to dlss balance and uh that doesn't mean that it's going to save you necessarily but it can uh, sometimes, depending on the game. You could always, obviously, drop the uh, graphical preset to high from Ultra. The game still looks great. And uh, like I mentioned in my previous videos, looking at this game, both FSR and DLSS uh, work really well in this game. Even if you were to drop to balance from 4K resolution, it looks great. As a matter of fact, I even checked out performance out of curiosity and that worked really good as well. When you're at 4K, you're working with such high resolution to begin with anyway. These upscalers that have since been updated since their release, that uh, they do a really, really good job. But I would say DLSS quality here at 4K, as you can see in this extremely dense uh, forest area, you're able to get around a 60 FPS experience. We can go ahead and try some DLSS uh, balance as well. Is that thing aggressive? No. Well, there we go. We got some uh, rabid dogs. All right, let's try DLSS um, balance. So 
So I'm adding this after editing it because I've been looking at the footage and right here is when we hit some VRAM limitations. And I can tell because I can look at the frame time graph, it's quite jittery. Now this can happen in the game normally anyway, but I'm also looking at the system RAM use and process that has gone up as well a little. And our FPS is pretty much the same as it was with DLSS quality and we've since dropped the balance, right? So those are some signs that we are at the borderline of VRAM spilling over to system RAM, right? It's not much, it's at the border. That's why the performance isn't horrendous. It'd probably be much worse if it was a lot more VRAM that was spilling over. So yeah, I think, I mean, come on guys. It's not a surprise, 12 gigs of VRAM at 4K with the uh, more recent games, especially Ubisoft games that are very high on uh, VRAM consumption anyway. It's not really a surprise. Plus you can look at my 4090 video and my 7900XX to see that at 4K, uh, it does go beyond uh, uh, 12 gigs. So honestly, I'm not really surprised. Now there's another thing that I've noticed, uh, that I've heard actually, that people have said that when you swap between DLSS quality to balance or vice versa, it's good to reset the game because VRAM can sort of pile on and on. Now I haven't tested that in this game, but I have seen that in other games, so that could be the case. I don't know, if you guys want, I can probably do a more thorough 4K look uh, with the 3080 Ti, go into more detail with the settings and stuff. But I am going to be looking at the 6800 XT next, no which has more VRAM than the 3080 Ti, and it's generally a weaker oh, yes. card, so it'll be interesting if the 6800 XT can kick the 3080 Ti's ass at 4K because of the VRAM advantage. I have yet to see it, so I want to see it here, um, if that's what it is. And yeah, I'll make sure that when I work on the 6800 XT video to also make a comparison with the 3080 Ti at 4K for this specific reason here. But anyways, this is going to be it for this video, guys. I just want to take a look with the 3080 Ti for you all and just to see for myself if 12 gigs is enough for 1440p. That was my main focus. I know for 4K, obviously with the newer games, 12 12 gigs is not, you shouldn't be buying a 12 gig card for 4K, <laughs> obviously. So, but I think if you're just playing at 1440p with these very VRAM demanding games, you'll be fine. Whether you have 4070, 4070 Ti or 3080 Ti, I don't see why not. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. If you did like it, give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, you can subscribe. Again, thanks for watching the video till the end. Even if you didn't, I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Bye.